Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another sequence video. So I was just on ETT's um, kind of walk and talk and somebody asked about uh, Joel chapter two. And then, so it just got me to read um, one and two. And then, uh, you know, I found the sequence in one and two. And so I've done a video where it's in two and three. And so it, again, it's just looping over and over again. And so, again, I don't say this to be arrogant, but you can't give somebody an answer as to what is happening you know in a lot of books in the bible if you don't understand you know the sequence because that's what's being looped you know over and over again and then i think his answer was something about how that northern army is symbolic but it's talking about america you know and so um it's talking about how a great a concentration of the deliverance um of salvation will be from america you know and then this northern army that um you know, represents America and it's going to be burned, you know, and then um, by uh, by the other nations and then uh, it's a permanent destruction. And so that's why knowing this sequence helps understand where that fits, you know, in all of that. And so that verse is outside of what I'm going to go through here, but it's very clear that that's what it's talking about, you know, when you understand the sequence of the end times. So starting with Joel 1.1, 1, 1, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. And so the word of the Lord came to fill in the blank in Israelite. Okay, so that, not always, but I found quite a few where it starts with the elect being sealed. Okay, now, uh, here's now after the elect are sealed, and then this is the time that I believe we're living in right now. Verse 10, the field is wasted, the land mourneth, and the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. So we see this, all these oil and gas prices and all that kind of stuff. And so we see uh, precursors to famines going on right now, even in Ukraine and Russia and all that, um, their land is literally being wasted, you know? And so, and they produce, you know, a certain percentage of um, these goods, you know, that the world relies on. <clears throat> Verse 11, be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, howl, O ye vine dressers for the wheat and for the barley because the harvest of the field is perished. And so we see that happening literally right now. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. And we see that. Everybody, I was just watching Gregory Manorino's live stream or um, summary. And then he's like, something's up. And then even somebody in the comments is like, this is it. <laughs> and so that's like a phrase that, you know, ETT coined um, from Rooney. Um, but, um, you know, they know that, you know, like it says here, because joy is withered away from the sons of man. And so when there's evil rulership, the world is in mourning. And that's, a, that's again, what the Bible teaches. And so that's the times that we're living in right now. Now, after this, we have a, a reference to salvation, which is, I believe, this thing that everybody is feeling is going to happen. This is in verse 14, okay, which is coded reference for the, the elect. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders of all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Okay, and so um, uh, what it says here, inhabitants of the land of the house of the Lord and uh, cry unto the Lord. Gather the elders and the, all the inhabitants of the land, gather the elders. Okay, this is a coded reference for the elect um, into the house of the Lord. Okay, that's salvation. They're taken away. That's in verse 14. Now, after they're taken away, begins the wrath of God. <clears throat> Verse 15, alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as destruction from the Almighty shall it come. And so now it's going to be very, very clear, you know, that this is coming from God directly. Okay. <clears throat> and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Verse 16, is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. That's in verse 16. Now these are the plagues in Revelation 16 that are kicking off. Verse 17, the seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down. The corn is withered. So God's going to start attacking the wildlife and the water. And then he's going to kick off a, a, a more broad famine worldwide. Verse 18, how do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. Verse 19, O Lord, to thee I will cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. Verse 20, the beasts of the field cry out unto thee, for the rivers of water are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. So during this time, there's going to be fighting, you know, still. The wars and rooms are going to increase. And then what it says in 2 Ezra is that when Christ reappears, which is what we're going to read next, they're going to stop that fighting, and then they're going to fight against God. 
okay so just expect the the birth pains all the things to increase you know the the famines the fighting you know amongst um, nations and all that kind of stuff that's creating this fire when they shoot you know all those missiles and all that kind of stuff so um, all these things are going to work towards um, greater and greater instability of course and then food shortages so um, that's consistent all of that stuff is just consistent with um, Revelation 16. Okay now after the wrath of God uh, which is Revelation 16, all the plagues. What do we get here? Joel 2 verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. This is talking about the elect. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land trouble all the inhabitants. Okay, so now they're all going to collectively fight against God. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Wait a minute, I thought that, um, you know, uh, the Christ only appears once. How, co how come other people don't know? That he's appearing to take away his elect and bring the two witnesses here. And then he reappears. So that, how come other people aren't teaching that? That's what Joel knows that because he writes about it here. And so these, this is like a long text, you know, and so they're separated in chapters, you know, just for the sake of putting it in a book. But Joel 1 and 2 is just a stream of scripture. Okay. And then so my point is what I've shown is that it's just looping the same thing over and over again. And then if you read later down Joel 2 and 3, and then it goes through the sequence again. And so you have to understand that <clears throat> to make sense of the Bible. Verse 2, uh, Joel 2, 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, clouds, UFOs. Christ going to return with um, the, the Zion, which is his elect, in, uh, in UFOs. And this is going to be the, the final battle, like it says here, in all the inhabitants in the land tremble. Uh, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains of great people and a strong there hath not been ever, sorry, not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So this is like the final battle, okay? The final war that's going to happen. Verse three, and this is going to be by fire. A fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and be behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. So this is in Isaiah 10, 18 and 19. Zephaniah 1 18, Revelation 14, uh, Revelation 20 verse 14. This is the final fire. Okay. Matthew 10 28, body and soul. The Bible says in Isaiah 10, he's going to burn everything. The child could count down how many trees that are left. That's referring to the trees and then the people. Okay. And the people that remain are the remnant that he'll protect. You have to read second Ezra to understand that. But uh, it's fire. Okay. In um, Joel 2 3, verse 4, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so they shall run in the sky. Okay, it describes these UFOs sometimes as in having animal-like characteristics. Verse 5, like the noise of chariots. Here it's explicitly saying chariots. On the tops of mountains. Okay, they're going to be high. When Christ says he's going to put the enemies beneath uh, the elect's feet, it's literal. It's going to be beneath their feet. Okay, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. And as strong people set in battle array. So this fight, fight is going to be by fire, okay? And it's permanent, body and soul. Um, verse 11, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. So his army is his elect, okay? For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? Okay, you cannot fight this. This is technology that no one understands. Because the people on this earth are retarded. Uh, verse 19, yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil and you shall be satisfied therewith and I'll no more make you a reproach among the heathen. So that's a reference to the kingdom. Okay. So that's a, that's a sequence. And then again, I just referenced the, you know, the other video that I have posted. Um, it's been, I, I think it's been a while since I've done that one, but, um, it just shows that if you go through Joel two and then three, and then it goes through the sequence again. So it's like, it's just looping it, you know, over and over again. And so the verse that that person was asking of is here in verse 20. And it just shows that it's going through the sequence again. And so, but I will remove afar off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward, sorry, and his hinder part toward the outmost sea and his stink shall come up and, and I'll, and I'll, and his I'll savor shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. This is talking about a land that God is going to make barren and desolate in the last days. 
Okay, and then a group's going to be removed far off from that northern army, that north country. Okay, this is the headquarters of salvation. That's what that's what Joel's talking about in uh, 220. Okay, and then 2 plus 20 is 22. They have rulership over the whole earth. The number 22 is used to code encode a rulership over the entire earth, which is obviously America. Behold, I will remove you far off from the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. And uh, this has to be a place that's surrounded by water. Like it says here, with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. So people are just going to be like, uh, I'm perplexed. Okay, that God just burned this place. Okay, and it's permanent. It's desolate now. And so it just shows again that after verse 19 is going through the sequence again. Okay, because that's a coded reference to salvation. So um, that's uh, Joel 1 and 2 encodes the sequence perfectly. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.